Notion is great for organizing your ideas. But what if it could also think for you? Automate tasks, send out emails, trigger workflows. That's what happens when you connect Notion to N8N. It stops being a workspace and becomes your second brain. That's why in this video, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about using N8N with Notion. This tutorial starts with the basics, like connecting N8N and running simple workflows. But by the end, you're going to be running advanced AI-driven workflows and syncing two-way platforms. So be sure to stay tuned. First, we have to connect Notion to N8N. If you've already done that, you can skip this part. First, let's go to notion.so forward slash profile forward slash integrations. The link will be in the description down below. Next, click on new integration. We have to give it a name. Choose which workspace you would like. Make sure it's internal and you can upload a logo if you like. Beautiful. Now click save and let's configure the integration settings. Here we have our internal integration secret. Go ahead and copy that. Let's go over to N8N, click on create credential, type notion, select the first one, notion API, click continue and paste the code you just copied click save and it says it was tested successfully but we're not quite done yet go back over to the last page scroll down and click read comments answer comments and now click save now leave this page open because we're going to need it here in a little bit now we have to add N8N to the Notion page. So open the Notion page you'd like to add it to. If you'd like to add it to multiple pages, just make sure you do it in the outermost page. It will be added to every single page inside of that page. Click on these top three dots here, scroll down to connections, and then find the one that you just created. I called mine Horizon N8N. You see we have this nice logo. You can click on that and click confirm. And now we are connected to this page. In order to test our integration, we're going to make a quick page using N8N. So jump over to N8N, create a new workflow. Let's add a trigger manually, and then we're gonna type in Notion, and we're going to select create a page. Now we have to put our parent page here, and that's the URL to the main page. So we'll go back over to Notion. If we click share and we copy the link, this is the link we need. Let's go back to N8N, let's paste that in and let's put a title of test page. And here we can add some blocks and some options. So let's explore that a little bit too. Let's add a block. We're gonna add heading one. Here is how to format the page. Let's add another block here and we'll make to-do list. Imagine this is a to-do list for an employee, right? And we'll put here subscribe now. Beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. Click execute step and it said we did create a page. So we'll go back over to Notion. We've got a test page right here. Let's click on it and it's telling you to subscribe now. Now jumping back over to N8N, I wanna show you guys something really quick. If we type in Notion again, you notice here there's database actions, database page actions, and then page actions. And under the database actions and database page actions, there's more things that you can do than a page. So it's time for me to explain to you guys the difference between a database and a page within Notion and why you should try to use the databases more than the pages themselves. When I create pages in Notion, all I have to do is type slash page. Technically, everything is a page in Notion that's a little folder like this, right? But there's this thing called a database. They have inline databases and full page databases, right? We're gonna do a full page one for now. So now, this database is also a page, but it's a page that is now searchable. Now you can add checkboxes. It's like an Excel, if you can think about it that way, okay? So we'll name this Excel for the example, okay? And of course we can add properties and things like that. I don't necessarily need to explain how Notion works. The point here I am trying to make is if you'd like to integrate N8N with Notion and have automations, triggers, and different events going on, it's better for you to use a database page because Notion's API is a lot more robust around the databases and there's a lot more you can do with Notion's inbuilt automations that allow you to complete the workflows in a way that just using pages would not be able to. All right, now let's imagine that we have a task board and we just received an email from Google and AI processed the email and created tasks for our team members. And we wanted to add those tasks to a board and assign our different team members to the task. I made a quick board here. We have task name. We've got a checkbox if it's complete. We have who's it's assigned to, the status, and the due date. So jumping over to N8N, I made a quick edit node here. 
We have the task name, the user, the due date, and the description. You can imagine that this just came over from ChatGPT, right? It already processed the email, and this is the JSON that it's returning to us, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the user ID of the person that we're assigning it to. Now, Notion is a little bit buggy when it comes to integrating this with N8N. So in order for the user to show up, first you have to invite them to the page, then they have to comment on the page and interact with the page, and then you have to refresh your Notion connection with N8N. I know that's a mess, don't ask me why, it's just the way it works. Furthermore, the members can't be guests of your workspace, they have to be actual members of your workspace, okay? So you can't just invite a random email and then mention them in N8N, you actually have to pay for an additional user in order to interact with them via API. That being said, let's get our additional user here. So type in Notion, click here, and we're going to scroll all the way down to get many users. Don't have to do anything at all. We'll just return them all, click execute step, and beautiful. Here we have two different users, Horizon Dev and Horizon N8N. Now, this is the integration itself, right? This is my user, okay? And what we're going to need is this ID right here. So what you can then do is you can take this ID, you can give it to ChatGPT, and tell it, hey, assign, John Abel, these type of tasks, here is her ID. And then ChatGPT will, instead of returning the user as a name, it will return the ID of the user, right? So it will look a little bit more like this. Beautiful. Now that we have that connected, remember guys, click P to pin data to nodes, okay? Let's add another Notion node and let's actually add the task here. So we're going to create a database page. We're gonna select the task board here. We're gonna put the title and properties are all the different columns that you made right here. Each one of these is a property. So we can click add property, click assign to, and we can select the user here, or we can put the ID inside this list. That should work just fine. And you can do multiple users here. All you have to do is put a comma here and then add more. Next, we're going to add a due date. And now we're going to add our task description. Now for this, we're just gonna add a block and we're gonna call it paragraph block and add the description there. Now we can test it, and it said that it created the task successfully. So let's go to Notion, and we can see that it worked properly, and it even mentioned us here, right here, Horizon N8N mention you and create SOP flow. Now we can update it, we can change statuses and stuff. Now let's say, for example, that we wanted to change the status to done, and when the status was changed to done, we wanted to send an email out to somebody else. Well, we can do that. Let's jump back over to N8N, and let's go ahead and delete this. We don't need it anymore. Let's instead add Notion as a trigger. And we're gonna go on page, updated, in database. If you wanna dive even deeper into the world of automation, I am hosting a free automation community where I teach you guys how to make advanced automations, how to land clients, and do everything in the automation world. So be sure to check out the link down below. Now, Notion does have webhooks and I will show you guys how to use that in a little bit, but they're not very good. And so there's no really good trigger for N8N. So instead, N8N has to check Notion every couple of minutes and based on that, run an automation. So we're gonna have it check every minute for a page updated in the task board. And we'll test it, go over to Notion, and let's change it to not steady. All right, beautiful. And we can see that it fetched a test event here. And now we have to check to see what actually changed because Notion doesn't tell you what changed. So in order to do that, you do an if node. So we could say if status updates, or we could say if checkbox is true. Let's do that one. If checkbox, we'll put here Boolean is true, then we send an email. So we can just imagine here that we're sending an email, right? I'm not gonna actually send an email out but we can take information from this task, push it to AI and send out an email. And then if not, it does nothing. And to make this even more complicated, if this was a high priority task, we could maybe even send a notification in Slack. And once the email gets sent out, we can actually go back to Notion and update that same page so that people know when they were contacted. So we can go update a database page, we'll go back to the Notion trigger and we'll go by ID and we'll grab that and drag that and drop that there. Now we can update the same page with a status of done. So we can execute that step. And if we go back to N8N, 
we can see now it's done. And if we wanted to add some information to the page itself, we can just go to Notion here. We can click Append a Block right here. And then again by ID, drag and drop that there. And we'll add whatever block we want. And here the client was contacted on 3-3-2020. We'll execute step. And we'll go back over to Notion and we can see it's right there. Beautiful. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of blocks that you can use to customize the page. There's a lot of things missing here that are in Notion itself. So that's where Notion's automations can also be quite good because we can make it to where whenever we click new here, it creates a templated page that's already built out and then NADN can edit that page, assign it to people and manipulate the data. So say for example, as soon as I check this checkbox, I wanted it to add to another database here. For example, we have two different task boards for two different employees and I wanted to move it from one to the other. So call this employee two. In this situation, it would actually be better to use Notion's automations themselves instead of trying to use NADN to automate Notion. So we can click up here create and view automations we'll go win checkbox is checked add page to employee two and then here we can grab the names and stuff we can put the time triggered when it was triggered we can assign people we can link it back to the original page so that they have two pages linked together right and these are some automations that I used to run I don't do very much project management in Notion anymore in fact I only do it for content I don't do it for my employees that being said this can become very powerful now something that's really interesting here is we can add a webhook so we can say every time this checkbox gets checked we send a webhook to a certain URL so we can go back over to NADN we can delete all this and we can go webhook as the trigger we'll grab the test link we'll listen for a test event we'll go over to notion we'll paste that in and send everything click enable so now this is a little bit faster way for it to connect it's not the best but if I check this checkbox we go over here so I was just troubleshooting this and you have to make sure that the webhook is active and then make sure the HTT method is post so let's try listening for it again we'll close this we'll uncheck and then recheck the checkbox and it should send out a webhook and we can see it did send that webhook out. So now you can see if you wanted to send stuff in real time to different apps, like for example, when this task gets done, send a confirmation over to Slack, or when this task gets passed to another person, Slack them, email the client. Every time the client emails back, create new tasks, right? I mean, there's a million things you can do here with Notion and NADN. If this video helped you guys out, then you have to check out my NADN API Masterclass. So be sure to check that out and I'll see you guys next time.